One of the main things I wanted to do with my ROG Ally is stream my PS5 games to the device and be able to actually play my games with the onboard controls. However, the PS5 Remote Play app actually doesn't allow you to do that and you have to use a PS5 controller via Bluetooth. Well, there's an application that was built for the Stream Deck that actually works for the ROG Ally that allows you to stream your PS4 or PS5 console to your handheld and use the built-in controls. So the program is called Chiki for Deck and I'm definitely saying it wrong, but I'm going to show you how to get this started and set up on your ROG Ally. First thing you need to do is go to this website here. I'll have it linked in the description as well as the pinned comment. Uh, GitHub.com slash Street Pete slash Taiki for Deck. You're also going to need a second website called PSN.flipscreen.games. This is going to give you a base 64 of your PSN username and it's going to allow you to connect to your PS5 without having to sign into PSN. Now, once you're on this GitHub page, just go to where it says releases, click on the latest release. For now, it's 1.6.3. It might be newer for you when you view this video. Go down to assets and you're going to you're going to see these links here. We're going to want the third one that is win 64. You're going to go ahead and click on that and it's going to start to download. It's a quick download. But once that's done, you could go ahead and click on that and then we're going to open up that file location. Once we have the file location open, just drag it to your desktop just to make things easier for clean up later on. Now we're going to want to go ahead and right click that or use the right trigger and that's going to open up this menu here. You're going to go ahead and extract all. Once you have extracted it, you're going to get a second folder that's also zipped. You're going to have to do the same exact thing. Just right click or right trigger, extract all, and then go ahead and let that extract. Now, this is not going to install on your computer. It's actually going to run all through these, this folder right here. So you can go ahead, put this in your documents folder or put this somewhere else, hide it, and then you can make a quick access point to it or just a shortcut to it to the desktop so that you don't have to uh, just mess around with the having the folder on your desktop. This is something I really like about this that it doesn't actually have to install to the PC itself. So I'm going to drag and drop this folder to the desktop as well, since it's redundant. And then I'm going to go ahead and just delete the other two folders since they're not necessary anymore. So now we're going to go ahead and open up this folder. You're going to see all these files here. We're going to want that Chiki uh, application uh, file right there. So you could go ahead and sort that through type and it should be right underneath those files. We're going to go ahead and click on that. You're going to get this window right here. Just click more info and run anyway. It's only because it's an unknown publisher that you're getting that pop up. Now, as you see here, the file or the program didn't open up for some reason. And this seems to be an issue that a lot of people are having uh, in order to fix this. If it doesn't work for you, you're going to go once again, right click on that application file. You're going to go to properties and then we're going to have to go to the compatibility tab, run this program in compatibility mode and leave it on Windows 8. Then you're going to go ahead and just click apply and OK. And then when you click to run that again, it should start and it should work. You also get this pop up here. Just go ahead and allow. This is going to allow you to find your PS5 console on your network. Once that's done, you'll get this pop up here and then we can go ahead and continue from here. I already had this registered, so don't mind that you might not have anything pop up. But what we need to do is just go ahead and click on the console if it is discovered or the cog wheel and you're going to have a registered console. You're going to want to register a new one. You're going to have this base 64 uh, pop up here. This file, this insert here. This is what I was talking about with that other website. So we're going to go back to that PSN flip screen dot games and you're going to type in your PSN uh, username. So I'm going to have mine right here. Uh, obviously, there's no reason to really hide this because anybody can type in any code. But encoded ID for Chiki is what we want. We're going to go ahead and copy that. And then we're going to go back and paste that into the base 64. And then on our PS4 or PS5, we're going to have to go ahead and find our pin. So I'm going to show you how to do that. All right. So once we have our PS5 started up, we're going to go over to the cog wheel on the top right. We're going to go to system and then we're going to go to remote play. Now we're going to want to make sure that enable remote play is on. And then we're going to go to link device. Once we click on link device, we are going to get a code that pops up and you're going to enter that code into the field on your ROG ally. Once you enter the code, the console should pop up. Now, for some reason, it's showing two consoles for me. I don't know why. Like I said, when you start this up, it might not show anything. So you're going to want to click the plus icon to register your console. But for me, it's popping up two consoles. I have no clue why. Maybe because I did this before. Uh, but that's pretty much it. Once you've done that, you can actually go ahead and start streaming 
your PS5 or PS4 console to your ROG Ally and the controls will work. You just got to make sure that you go into your command center and you do turn your controller from auto or desktop into handheld or else you won't have any controls as you see here. I changed mine to gamepad because I noticed my controls weren't working and then it should start to work. Now, I'm also going to go ahead and show you a few of the settings within this application because you may run into some uh, difficulty streaming some games uh, via your bit rate might be too high or too low. Um, there's a lot of settings within this application that you can actually tweak. So I'm going to go ahead and show you a few of the things that you might want to mess around with. Now, as you see here, when you go to click out, it may ask you to put into sleep mode. You can have it ask you all the time or just go ahead and just do it by default, put it into sleep mode. Uh, you could go ahead and just mess with all these other features. I leave this alone. When you go into video, you could change your resolution 720p to 1080p. You could change the FPS from 60 to 30. And then you can also change your bit rate, which will I will do later in this video because I do notice that it is a little bit choppy. So I change it from the default 10,000 to 16,000. But this all does depend on the speed of your Wi Fi and your uh, connection and latency and all of that. Uh, you also have your codec, your hardware decoder. I leave all that normal unless my game is running a little bit wonky. I will start to mess around with that. Uh, maybe I'll try the uh, Vulcan decoder or whatever, or try a different codec just to see if it does actually help out. Same thing with the audio. You may see that the audio is a little bit choppy. You may want to change the bit rate to the audio to 9000, see if that works out. And then keys, you could go ahead and change uh, the layout of the controls. Uh, from what I know, they work perfectly fine and it does mimic a one for one with the PS5 controller. So you're just going to have to play around with that if you have any problems whatsoever within the game. Now I'm going to go ahead and test out a game and I'll show you how that runs. All right, so I have Final Fantasy VII Remake here. And as I was mentioning before with the choppiness, you may actually see it here. You get some frame tearing um, when it does come to a lot of visual effects on screen. It does tend to become choppy and noisy, as you saw there. When I go into the menu, it, it got a little pixelated. Um, I noticed that just changing the bit rate from the standard 10,000 to the 16,000 actually ends up helping with that. So I'm going to show you what difference that actually makes. As you see there, it happened again when I open up the tactical menu. Um, I'm going to show you what it looks like when you do change it from the 10,000 to 16,000. All right, so now my bit rate is at 1600, uh, 16,000. Uh, and as you see here, when I bring up the tactical menu, I no longer have that study grainy pixelated mess. Um, another thing to mention is that obviously this isn't going to look as good as if you were just playing the PS5 on your TV. Uh, I'm also capturing through a really bad capture card. Uh, that's another thing just to keep in mind. But as you see there, the flame explosion, the menu pops up. It doesn't become pixelated anymore. So that 16,000 bit rate works for me. It may not work for you. But that's it for today. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe, like, and comment. And I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Peace.